Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be using GIMP 2.10 to create a bokeh effect image, also known as a blurred background, right? So let's go ahead and open up the web browser. I'm gonna download two images. We'll download this photograph here of this background. Let's click download. And then we're gonna download the second picture, which is of this lady here. We'll click this one and we'll click download as well. And we'll just drag and drop them into this folder on my desktop. Let's do that drag and drop them in here close down the browser I'll put links to these images in the YouTube description so you can download the exact same images I'm using and follow me in this tutorial so let's go to file new and we're going to set it to 1920 by 1080 click advanced options and in the resolution we're going to set it to 72 dpi 72 dots per inch in the fill with we don't want to fill it red we don't want to fill it white this is the foreground, so if you select foreground, it will go red. If you select background, it's gonna go white. We wanna set transparency. We select transparency and click OK. We've got a transparent background or transparent canvas. Let's click on the folder and we'll drag and drop the picture of the background into here. And we're gonna hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out. We can also use the middle mouse button to pan the, pan the canvas around the screen, right? Just to align it a little bit better on the screen. Now, we want to resize this background, so let's click on the resize tool or the scale tool and we'll click on the image and you can see we can't see our target size like the background or the canvas size we originally created. This image is overlapping it. So to see the background, uh, what we do is just reduce the opacity of this image, this image here, the background, right? The one that we're going to resize. Now you can see the target size of the background. So when we resize, we know that if we go too far here, it's going to be a problem. We want to stay outside. We want a little gap on the edges here outside. Click scale, and then we can set the opacity all the way back up to the top. All right now we've got it nicely scaled. Use the control key and the mouse wheel to zoom back in. Click on the move tool, and then click on the picture. Hold down the shift key, and use the up arrow to move the image up. So we'll move it up to around here, and then we use the down arrow by itself without the shift key to refine that you can kind of see there's this little sort of thing sticking out here in the ground right about here i just want to get rid of that so let's just hold down the down arrow to move it down past that point and then we'll press Control s to save let's go to my desktop let's go to this gimp file here and we'll type in here blur background uh, blur background Okay, effect dash zero one. Let's just save that into the folder where we saved the images earlier. Let's press Control S to save. Let's go to File Open. We've got two choices here, really. We could drag the picture of this lady into this canvas here, but I don't think that's wise. We should work on this image separately and then move the image into this file afterwards. So really, what we can do to um. To save a little bit of memory, what we can actually do is close down this background for the moment, click open, and then select the picture of the lady. Uh, this one here is where is it? Um, let's go back to my desktop, let's go to the GIMP file, and we select this picture, yeah? So the same image. Well, the, the other image that's in that folder. Let's click open. So here we've got the picture of this lady and we want to remove the background. There's a few different ways we can do this. Um, we could try and use like the select by color tool. So we can click on that, select the color, a specific color, but you can see it's selecting the face and selecting other things because they're similar to that particular color, the background. The background and the, the person have got similar colors, so it's not going to work. You could try the magic wand tool, so let's do select none and click here. You can adjust the threshold. And again, it ain't going to be a great selection. It's going to cause problems because of the, the skin tone and the background are very similar, yeah? sort of similar colors. So let's go to select none. And what we'll use is the foreground select tool. So let's click on that. And the first thing we need to do is draw a lasso shape around the image. So let's click where the elbow is here and we'll just draw around this picture. So I'm just left clicking to draw this initial selection around the image. And GIMP will use this information to know 
roughly what we're trying to select, right? Something like this. If you make a mistake, you can press, um, you can actually click on one of the, the segments and you can move it, right? Like this, you can just move them around. So if I click in here by accident, I can just highlight over it and just drag it to position. And then we'll click here. And then we'll hit the enter key. Let's just go to select none. That makes that deselects our uh, magic wand tool that we was using earlier, right? So we don't want any, any selection in here. So let's go to the, um, when we hit the enter key, it gives us a paintbrush basically, right? So if we, if we increase the stroke size, we can see the paintbrush getting bigger here. Let's increase it some more. Now it's kind of this size, that's a pretty good size. I'm gonna click on this top swatch. So click right here on the top one right here. And I'm going to drag this handle in the color wheel all the way to the top and then click inside here and drag it all the way to the top left. So I've got a strong red color, click OK. And all I wanna do really is zoom in on this picture and I wanna paint inside of the silhouette, not outside. I want to go outside. I don't want to be outside of the selection. I want to be inside the selection. So you can see that I'm painting across here. I don't have to get super close to the edge, but get pretty close and we might refine this a little bit afterwards. And my advice is every time you get a piece of the, the picture done, like all of this big part here, let go of the mouse button. Let go of it every few steps. Because if you do a lot of the image and then you happen to draw outside by accident, you can then easily press Control Z to undo and get back to the last step, right? So letting go of the mass uh, button every so often is a very good tip. That's something you should be doing. And that's something I would advise uh, to save you a lot of headache. So let's fill in this quite quickly. We can actually zoom out a little bit here, right? We've got like this elbow down here, down the side. And we just want to do a rough selection quickly and then we might go in and refine this a little bit more in a moment but if we can get the bulk of it done there's no reason why we have to be so careful here uh, we're just filling filling in the main parts right and we'll go in and tidy up a little bit so we've got most of the selection done but you can see the hand here and the elbow and a bit of the hair and stuff like that we just want to refine it a little bit so we want to zoom in and really get close to the image and we'll reduce the size of the brush a bit to something like this size. And then we can go around this elbow a little bit closer. Now remember, you don't have to get really, really close. You have to get kind of close, right? This is pretty good. And then down this side, we'll get as close as we can without going off. Like I said, you don't have to get super close, but quite close. You can see I'm pretty close here, right? And GIMP's gonna use this information that we're giving it to make the selection afterwards so this is the idea and the closer we get to this edge the better it is but like i said you don't have to get that like, pixel close um just roughly close like around here is good i think you know i'm not 100 percent sure how gimp's working out this information but from what i understand um it's going to compare pixel by pixel across the across the image and what you've selected it's going to use that information to refine the selection for you around the edge. Uh, I've kind of almost gone off the edge here. Let's just undo that. Let's just get a little bit closer down here. So it takes a bit of time and effort, right? But the time and effort you put into this step will reflect in the selection that you get in the end result. So I could do a little fast forward thing here but this shouldn't take too long to do. So we'll just do this together now. And we might have to do a bit of cleaning up after the selection, but let's not worry about that for a minute. Let's just try and do the best that we can right now. I think that's pretty good. Let's move to the other side. You can use the middle mouse button, right? You can hold the middle mouse button to move up and down the canvas as you're painting around this edge. And let's try and get the best 
selection possible around this edge normally if it's a more basic shape or if the color if the background is like a solid color then you can just use like the magic wand tool right it will do a better it will do a quicker job not necessarily a better one but it will do a much quicker job um but where the image is quite complex like a person and there's so many different colors and there's different shapes and stuff like this then this is where this magic wand tool can do a better job oh, sorry the uh, foreground select tool so here i'm getting very close to the edge i haven't gone off the edge so it should be okay uh, it should be fine remember you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out you know the paintbrush you can make it a bit smaller if necessary we're going to need to do that in a moment uh, but for now what we want to do is just paint some of this hair in here let's just zoom out and see what we're looking at right so really we can probably get a lot of this in here Okay, we're almost done. There's a few little bits to tidy up still, but let's see. So I'm not going to worry about the hair too much here. Hopefully, Gimp will do a pretty good job with it. Let's just get a bit of this hair here. And then on this side, this elbow is pretty good. The hand is a bit of a problem and the hair up here, we need to really try and get in a bit closer here. And we just fix up this hand and then we're pretty much done. So let's make the brush a bit smaller because we're going to go around the edge of these knuckles, right? And these fingers. Remember, let go of the mask every so often because if you make a mistake and you go off like this, you can just press Control Z. All right, very important. Trust me, I learned it the hard way. Okay, almost done, let's do this. Can probably get a bit more of this, this hair in here. Want these fingers right let's make sure we get the fingers don't want any sort of missing fingers it won't be good i think we're pretty good now yeah we've covered most of it it's not going to be like pixel perfect, but we're pretty good. So once we've done that, we've painted around the silhouette as best as we can. We can click the select tool. So it's computing alpha of known pixels. So you have to be patient here. This takes a little bit of time. Keeps doing some hard work for us, doing some bit of uh, weight lifting for us, and it's done that right. So what we want to do now is create a new layer. Let's quick. Um, in fact, what we do is go to edit copy first then we'll create a new blank layer and we'll set that to transparency so i'm clicking on this little left icon down here and we want to set it to transparency here and then click ok and then click on that layer that new one we just created and press ctrl v or you can go to edit paste here or ctrl v and then click the anchor icon here this green one and then hide the original image. Now you can see the um, background cut out, right? It's done a pretty good job, but we need to tidy up a little bit. So let's click create another new blank layer. 
and this time we'll set it to the foreground color. The foreground color is red and we'll click OK and then we'll drag this picture down so that we we'll drag this layer down so we can see if there's any issues with it. Now the wise thing for us to do is go to file save as and let's just set this. We can just save it as an XCF file um, in that particular file name is fine. Let's just click save. So we've got a backup just in case anything strange goes on. Uh, it should be fine though. And what we want to do is click on the top picture, click on the eraser tool. And this is kind of optional, right? You don't have to do this, but I think we should really tidy it up. You can see like the selection here, you can see it's like not that great. Let's click on the um, this, this uh, brush size here or this brush here. And we we'll set the size to around 180. We're using the razor tool. We can just quickly go around the edge and just clean up the edges. Because this is quite high res, we're not really going to notice this this much when we bring the image into um, the background layer. But for me, this is something you should be learning anyway, right? To clean up the edges and you should be doing this anyway. This is not something that you should not be doing. This is something that we should learn how to do. Uh, so if you make a mistake, Control Z, right? Always remember Control Z is your best friend. But let go of the mouse wheel or the mouse button, should I say, every so often. Um, so you can do a step, let go of it. You can do some more. If you make a mistake, you can easily press Control Z to undo. So it's a bit of tidying up. Uh, if we did this using a layer mask, I think it would take a bit longer. We'd get a, probably a better result, but it would take a lot longer. And today is not about longness, today is about uh, doing it a bit quicker. Right, really this stuff down here is not really going to be that noticeable, yeah? It's not really that necessary to tidy up, but if you want a really good result at the end, it's the effort you put in now is going to result in the, the end product, right? The end result, so we should put effort in here. You could even do things like, um, I'll show you a few sort of little problems that I can see and how you might go about fixing them. We'll look at that in a moment, but for now, let's just clean up these edges a little bit. And it, let's just get some rid of some of this. If you zoom right out, you won't really notice any of this stuff that I'm deleting right so only when you're getting close can you see it but out here you won't really see it too much but it doesn't mean we shouldn't fix it I think we should fix it and normally I'll spend a bit more time doing this to be fair but I'm sure you're losing patience so we'll speed it up Let me just try and get this looking a bit better you know, hair is a bit more tricky you should really spend a bit more time tidying that up but we'll leave it like that for now don't worry about that too much you won't really notice it too much when we move this image across should look pretty good now you can go in and use something like the um the uh i'll show you in a moment let's just get rid of some of this in here should really let go of the mouse button every so often right okay I think that's going to be pretty good right so the hair we could have tied it up a little bit better to be fair but it's okay it's not too bad so um if you notice a few couple of few things here like around here i'm being really picky right but you could use something like the 
the um, clone tool to like paint in the skin a little bit so you could click here or uh, this where's the clone tool gone let's see the stamp tool here and then we can hold down the, the um, control key to hold in the control key left click around here and you can use that to like paint back in some of the skin stuff like that all right you can see it's been it's got a bit of an alpha channel on it so it's seen through and you can click down here paint this in again but I won't put my time into that that's how I'll go about refining the hair I'll clone some of the hair and fix it a little bit but overall it's looking pretty good so now what we want to do is go to file save and we'll go back to our move tool let's click on that layer select it press ctrl c to copy it right and then go to file open and we'll click on our original background picture and open it and then we'll create a new layer a new blank layer so i'm clicking down here new blank layer and make sure it's set to transparency transparency click ok then click that layer and press ctrl v and then hit this anchor icon anchor the floating layer so that will anchor that icon down or anchor that image down to this layer we can rename this to something like lady just give it a sensible name hold down the control key and zoom out and then click on the scale tool click on the picture and then scale it down so that it fits nicely something around here should be pretty good let's move it to around this sort of position and then click scale and we can see the car is pretty good right it's not too bad normally i click on the background just to see what it looks like i think we did a pretty good job the car is pretty clean so what we want to do is click on this background the the picture of these palm trees and stuff here it is we're going to right click and duplicate it once twice three times so we've got four four copies of this background because so we can apply different types of background styles let's save this let's click on the very top one let's go to the filter uh, we'll go to blur and we'll go to gaussian blur the first one gaussian blur at the top we can click that and then we'll increase the um, size of that blur so we just want to blur it out to somewhere around 11.75 12 something like that around that's what sort of number yeah around 12 is pretty good 10 to 12 normally works pretty well so we can reduce that a little bit it depends but you know when you take them them photographs on a camera depending on your phone or what sort of camera you're using you can normally have like the silhouette quite sharp and then the backgrounds blurred out so that's the sort of effect we're looking for so let's click ok let's go to file and we'll export as and we're going to export it as a jpeg so let's select file type scroll down select jpeg and it's going to be called blur background bokeh effect 01 jpeg let's click export and that will be the first example we set it to 90 percent compression and click export so we've got one example the reason why we copied this background multiple times let's just zoom in here a bit is that we can hide this background the blurred one and now it's showing the layer right below it this one and we can apply a different effects so let's go back to filter blur and then we'll do something like um let's see a zoom blur effect right let's click that one and now you've got this sort of zoom blur what you, with this one what you can do is click on this little arrow icon here and you can move the position of where the blur is coming from right normally like behind the person is a pretty good place to have the blur effect coming from and this is a zoom blur so you can actually change the blur focus the blur factor should i say and we can increase that to something like this and we get a nice different sort of style and design so we're blurring out that background but we're blurring it from the position behind the, this lady so we get this sort of like raise effect sort of thing coming off right let's save that one file export as and we'll save it as version 2 so it'll be called blur background bokeh effect 02.jpg export and we'll leave it at 90% compression let's click ok we can hide that one click on the next one so we can see the next background normally you have to have the move tool selected as default we'll click on that we'll go to filter blur and then we can do a circular blur right so we've got this radial blur now this one i'm not too sure about let's see uh, let's click on the um, icon here and we can position where we want that blur to be and then i think the angle let's increase that let's see what sort of effects we can get out of it
It's not the best. You can see it's got some like artifacts here. It's not looking great. I don't think we use. We could split it and see what it looked like before and after. But I don't think that's looking too good. Let's try something else. Let's try. Um, let's see. There's quite a few options in here, right? So linear. We've got a linear blur. Let's try linear blur. You can change the angle and the length, right? This more looks like a motion blur in a way, but like on the on the width. But you can change the angle. You can get it to blur like this. I think that's quite interesting. Let's click OK. That's another example. Let's go to File Export As, and we'll export that as version three. And then we'll hide that background, and then we've got the original background. So this one I don't edit. The reason why we created um copies is that we can retain our original background let's um go to file export as and make that version 4 actually so we've got original background one as well let's export that and then we can just hide and show these layers to show the different background effects so i think this the first one uh this one is probably the most close to what we was trying to achieve the bokeh effect with the blurred background but also like this one as well. So let's go to file save. Let's minimize GIMP. And inside this folder, we have our original image, we have our background, and now we've got the blurred backgrounds. And here you can see the different styles that we created. And I think really this is the style that we was trying to achieve. But I kind of like this one with the uh, the motion blur in this sort of this style as well. So the reason why we created them at 1080p is we can easily go to here, we can right click on it and set it as a desktop background and now this could have been a picture of you or whoever it is your friend families whatever it might be you can cut around them you can see the cut around is pretty good the hair we could have done a bit better but overall i'm quite impressed with gimp the way that it's cut around the image i think that's pretty good let's go back to personalize here and let me set it back to my original desktop background okay so that's quite interesting something a bit different in gimp i know it took a bit of time to go through this but Sometimes I think it's better to to not fast forward stuff in videos. I've seen a lot of people they will just like speed through something and you don't really understand what they're doing. But I think it's better to take time and energy and, and, and show you exactly how it's done. So that way you can repeat that for any of your own images. Now you know how to do this. You can take any picture and go and repeat that process. Pictures that have clean, plain black backgrounds, then you can use something like the magic wand tool to just cut around them quite quickly. And then more complex images like what we've done today. I've picked those particular pictures because the cut around that is a bit much, but it's much more difficult to do, to achieve. Okay, so I hope you find this tutorial useful. If you've got any questions, feel free to write a comment on the, uh, I'll be uploading this to Facebook and YouTube, so I'll write a little comment. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can get access to over 500 video tutorials there on a wide range of subjects from 3D animation to creating Word documents and spreadsheets and using Photoshop and GIMP. And it's just a big knowledge dump that I've done there. I've just dumped all of my knowledge as much as I can, as often as I can into that YouTube channel. I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.